This is a true crime in real time update from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. It's a name you may not have heard before. Judge Oren Subramanian. But in a few short months, he'll preside over one of the most highly anticipated and closely watched trials in recent memory. He's the man who will decide how to manage the courtroom when Sean Diddy Combs, a figure larger than life, stands trial for a litany of charges, charges that, if proven, could shatter the legacy of one of music's most powerful icons. But who is Arun Subramanian, and what does his history tell us about the judge who will guide the process forward? To understand that, you need to know where he came from, the life he's lived, and how that journey has shaped the kind of judge he is today. Subramanian was born in 1979 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His parents were immigrants from India, arriving in America in the early 1970s. His father worked as a control systems engineer, navigating the world of technology and engineering, while his mother held a variety of jobs, including as a bookkeeper. Their story is familiar to many. An immigrant family working tirelessly for a better future in a country that promises opportunity. And for Subramanian, the opportunity was education. He earned his Bachelor of Arts from Case Western Reserve University in 2001, studying computer science and English. An unusual but fitting combination for someone who would go on to juggle complex commercial litigation and nuanced legal arguments. He then attended Columbia Law School, where he didn't just study the law, he excelled. Graduating in 2004, he was named a James Kent and Harlan Fisk Stone Scholar, two of the highest academic distinctions at Columbia. He also served as the executive articles editor of the Columbia Law Review, a position that gave him a front row seat to some of the most critical legal debates of the time. But that was just the beginning. Upon graduating, Subramanian's career took off. He clerked for not one, not two, but three legal heavyweights. Judge Dennis Jacobs of the Second Circuit, Judge Gerard Lynch of the Southern District of New York, and most notably, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg of the United States Supreme Court. Imagine the kind of experience one gains working so closely with minds like those. Ginsburg, in particular, was known for her meticulous attention to detail, her demand for precision in legal reasoning, and her profound sense of justice. Working under Ginsburg would leave an indelible mark on Subramanian, shaping his approach to the law in ways we can only begin to speculate. By 2007, Subramanian had joined the prestigious New York law firm Suzman Godfrey LLP. As a partner at this white shoe firm, Subramanian's focus was primarily on commercial law, but he was no stranger to complex litigation, often handling cases that would put millions, sometimes billions, of dollars on the line. His record speaks for itself. Over $400 million won for state and federal governments in a lawsuit involving Novartis Pharmaceuticals, $590 million in settlements related to the LIBOR price-fixing scandal, and a $100 million judgment in a mortgage-backed securities case. These are not the victories of a man who is easily overwhelmed. And yet, despite these high-profile cases, Subramanian remained deeply committed to public service and consumer protection. His work defending victims of child pornography and trafficking has drawn praise from both sides of the political aisle, highlighting his dedication to fighting for those who often have no voice in the system. It's this balance, his ability to manage intricate commercial cases while never losing sight of the human element, that makes him uniquely suited for the challenges of the Diddy trial. In March 2023, Subramanian's career took another turn. He was recommended by Senator Chuck Schumer and nominated by President Joe Biden to serve as a judge in the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York. A historic appointment, he became the first South Asian American to serve on the court, which has one of the largest South Asian populations in the country. His confirmation wasn't without scrutiny. Any judicial nominee faces that, but his record, his work ethic, and his history of fairness won the day. He was confirmed by a 58-37 vote in the Senate, receiving bipartisan support. That brings us to today, where this history now intersects with one of the most high-profile cases of our time. Sean Diddy, Combs, the music mogul whose name alone conjures images of success and excess, 
will stand trial for a series of allegations that paint a far darker picture. Allegations of sex trafficking, racketeering, coercion, and more. A case that stretches back more than a decade and involves multiple women who claimed they were abused, controlled, and coerced into silence by a man who wielded immense power in the music industry. And Judge Supermanian will be the one to preside over this. He'll be tasked with managing a courtroom where the stakes are incredibly high, both for the victim seeking justice and for a man who has spent years cultivating an image of untouchable success. So how might Supermanian's past inform the way he handles this trial? For one, his experience with complex cases involving massive amounts of data and financial transactions will be critical. In this trial, the evidence goes beyond testimony. It includes more than 90 terabytes of data seized from Diddy's homes, including emails, financial records, and electronic communications. This kind of volume would overwhelm many, but for a man who's dealt with the intricate workings of corporate lawsuits, it's familiar territory. Subramanian's meticulous nature, honed during his time with Justice Ginsburg, will likely serve him well as he works to ensure that every piece of evidence is considered fairly and objectively. Then there's the matter of Diddy's influence. A man of such fame and fortune brings with him the weight of public perception, media attention, and perhaps even the power to sway those around him. But Subramanian, having clerked for both Ginsburg and Judge Lynch, is no stranger to high-profile cases. He's worked in environments where the spotlight is sharp, where the stakes are high, and where impartiality is not just expected, but required. He will likely not be swayed by the celebrity status of the defendant. Moreover, Subramanian's commitment to victims' rights, particularly his work defending those who have suffered from exploitation and abuse, may shape how he views the allegations brought against Diddy. While he will, of course, approach the case with the fairness required of any judge, his background suggests that he is deeply attuned to the experiences of those who are marginalized or silenced. He will not overlook the voices of the women who have come forward, nor will he allow the scale of Diddy's empire to overshadow the need for justice. But the defense team will also have its say. Diddy's attorneys have argued from the outset that their client is being unfairly targeted, that he is, in their words, an imperfect man but not a criminal. They point to his cooperation with authorities, his decision to voluntarily move to New York for the trial, and his long history of philanthropy and work in the black community. Subramanian will have to weigh these claims carefully, ensuring that Diddy receives a fair trial, free from the biases that often accompany high-profile defendants. The question, then, is not just what evidence will be presented, but how Judge Subramanian will handle the tensions in the courtroom. His record suggests that he will approach the case with the same methodical care he's shown throughout his career. But this trial is not like others. The media attention alone will be immense, with cameras trained on every movement, every word, every decision. The pressure will be unlike anything Subramanian has faced before. Yet, for a man who has clerked for Justice Ginsburg, who has argued cases involving billions of dollars and vulnerable victims, one gets the sense that he will rise to the occasion. May 5th, 2025, that's the date set for the trial to begin. Until then, the world will wait. And when that day arrives, all eyes will be on the courtroom, on Sean Diddy Combs, and on the man who will guide the proceedings, Judge Aaron Subramanian. What happens next will depend on the evidence, the arguments, and the law. But one thing is clear. Judge Subramanian's presence on the bench will be felt. His commitment to fairness, his experience with complex legal matters, and his deep understanding of the human element in every case suggests that this trial will be one of the most carefully managed and closely watched in recent history. For Diddy, for the victims, and for the public, this is just the beginning of a hopeful end to Diddy's reign of terror over his hundreds, possibly thousands of alleged victims, and for society to rid itself of yet another predator hiding in plain sight for decades. In a world where the darkest secrets lie just beneath the surface. Well, they said it was an accident, but the evidence says otherwise. Where hidden killers roam unnoticed. 
in the shadows. Well, I think you would definitely be looking at a, a blend of toxic, very bad narcissistic personality traits, and they will be vengeful and possibly resort to violence. Join Tony Bruschi as he uncovers the truth behind the most chilling cases. <laughs> they said it was an accident, but the evidence clearly says otherwise. Each episode, we dig deep into the minds of those who commit the unthinkable. To your point on narcissism, he thinks in his own mind how witty he is, yeah. but he lost that jury. I, I was I was done with him in two minutes. From unsolved mysteries to infamous crimes. Geez, you've just talked about how you've taught yourself how to do everything under the sun. I bet you did a YouTube video, how to best kill somebody with a knife. Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi takes you where few dare to go. How does someone with such a dark secret go unnoticed? for so long with multiple new episodes every single day we're not just telling stories we're seeking justice listen now on apple podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts just search for hidden killers with tony brewski